Inheritance at OOP. Are you down with OOP? Yeah, you know me. It's time to inherit some cool traits to keep our code flow and free. Continuing our journey through the pillars of object oriented programming, OOP, let's dive into inheritance. Inheritance allows one class to inherit fields and methods from another, promoting code reusability and a natural hierarchy. So, what is inheritance? Inheritance is a mechanism in OOP that allows one class, a subclass or a derived class, to inherit fields and methods from another class, which we call a superclass or a base class. The so superclass is the class being inherited from. Subclass is the class that inherits from the superclass. Okay. Uh, inheritance represents and is a relationship. Uh, what I mean by that, for example, a dog is an animal. So hence, a dog can inherit properties and behaviors from animals. Okay. So, some real world examples think of a university system. A person is a superclass, which contributes attributes like a name and an address. But at the university, we have students and professors. Um, and these are subclasses that inherit from that person class, but they can also have their own unique attributes to go along with that. Like class is taught, class is taken. All right, so inheritance in Java, in Java, inheritance is achieved by using the extends keyword. Have you seen that before? Yeah, oh my god, that's his friends. Okay, that's how that works. Right? Yes, yeah, so we were always doing inheritance before. We looked at the uh, exception class when we were creating our own custom exceptions. Um, when we were looking at track, we were using this class. That's what we were doing. We were doing inheritance. Okay, so let's take a look at a basic example of inheritance. So uh, we have this super class here. We'll call it animal. Um, and let's focus on this guy first. So this void method that returns nothing here. It's called eat. And this animal eats. That's true. That's what happens. Let's see. Okay, so uh, if we were to create a subclass for that, a dog, we'd have class dog, and we're going to let you know it extends animal, meaning that it inherits everything from animal, and it has its own special things that it needs to. Let's take a look at uh, that eating thing. Oh, do you see an eating method in dog? Oh, why not? It's going to eat. But do you notice that there's another method here that wasn't in the other one? It's called bark. Okay. What does bark do? Because dogs bark. All animals don't bark. You know, sometimes you may say they do, but all bark animals don't bark. But we have a void bark. It's going to say this dog barks. Okay. So um, let's take a look and see what happens when we do this. So we got my dog. Um, you know, so we're going to have it eat because it's inheriting from the animal class the method to eat, and because all animals can eat, and then bark, and something only the dogs can do. So, there we go. And, oops.
Okay. So this animal eats food and the dog barks. Yay. So this example, animal is a superclass with a method E. A dog is a subclass that inherits the E method from animal and has its own method part. Okay. So uh, let's talk about overriding methods. So subclasses can provide a specific implementation for a method already defined in its superclass. And this is called method overriding. So for example, uh, animals make sounds. So let's say we have a, uh, an animal, we have a method called sound. And all this is animal makes a sound because we don't know what kind of sound animals make. They're you know, all different sounds. So, But in a dog, we know what that does. They make. That's the sound they make. So we're going to override that. So in animal, we have this ability to have a sound. And in dog, we're going to override that sound by using the at override here right above it. And we're going to override it. So that it will know that dogs bark when they make a sound. All the other animals, other animals just make sounds. We don't know what they are. Okay. So let's take a look at that, shall we? All right. So shall we make a sound? So I'm going to create an animal on my animal, and it's going to make a sound. And we're going to create a dog and see how that sound is different. Okay, shall we? So notice here, this animal makes a sound. And but when a dog makes a sound, it barks. OK. Uh, so here, the dog class overrides the sound method of the animal class to provide a specific implementation. So let's talk about using super. So the super keyword refers to the super class and can be used to call the super class's constructor or call a method in the super class, um, but in the subclass. Okay. So um, let's let's uh, use the. Uh, so that allow animal to have a field called name um, and then its own constructor here and its own um, way to display name. Okay. And so in dog, we're going to uh, do the same by adding a super. So in our dog constructor, it also needs a name because animal needs a name, dog needs a name. And when it gets that name, it's going to do whatever. It's going to call the animal constructor. There are other things you could have it do after this, but this would be the basis of it because it extends the animal class. It must have what animal has um, in order to construct it. Okay. And we're going to override that display by having it call the display method, which um, gives the name of the animal. And then it's going to say, this is a dog. So we're adding something to it. So this is what I meant earlier by what I said that you use the super class and then uh, you can use the you can use super to use the uh, to use the super classes um, method or field, but then you can add something to that after it if you like. Okay, so we have freedom, freedom, freedom to be free. Yeah. All right. So I don't have a very Take a look at my buddy. Let's take a look at my buddy. No, my buddy. My buddy. My buddy. Wherever I go. So, animal name is Buddy. And we created a new dog. Uh, the same, uh, a new dog object. Same to the mirror of my dog. And we're saying my dog is Buddy. So, it's going to go here. Search in buddy and it's gonna say hey buddy. I need you to go back to animal and make an animal buddy. And so it does. And so therefore the name buddy gets saved to the field animal field name. Then uh, we call display on my dog and 
Um, that goes to the animal display. So up here, it knows how to do that. Oh, just put animal's name, animal name, and then buddy, in this case. And then last but not least, put out the dog. This is a dog. Just let people know. Not just any animal, it's a dog. So in this example, the dog class constructor follows the animal class constructor using the super name. And the dollar class overwrites the display method, but also calls the super class display method by using super dot display. Okay. So some key points: inheritance hierarchy. A class can inherit from other from another class, forming a hierarchy of super and sub. Uh, code reusability. Inheritance promotes uh, code reusability and a logical relationship between those classes. Uh, method overriding. Subclasses can overwrite override methods to provide specific implementations. And the super keyword um, used to access super class methods and constructors. Okay. So in summary, inheritance is a powerful feature in OOP that allows you to create a new class based on existing class, based on an existing class. It simplifies code, it enhances reusability, and helps in creating a logical class hierarchy. So, are you down with OOP? Yeah, you know me. Inheriting greatness and our code's complexity is free. Stay tuned as we continue to build on these concepts um, and making our journey through OOP even more engaging and exciting. Look at the pajama. Doing the app with the key.